Are you looking for that romantic message for that special someone in your life? Well, look no further than the Song of Solomon. Nothing says, I love you, like thou hast dove's eyes within thy locks. Thy hair is a flock of goats that appeareth from Mount Gilead. Or my personal favorite is, thy nose is as the tower of Lebanon which looketh toward Damascus. Smoldering. Wait, what? I, I thought we were doing the Song of... Oh, that makes more sense now. The Wisdom of Solomon. Okay, gotcha. Well, <laughs> Um, that's, uh, that's a little embarrassing. Um, well, I, uh, I guess we should jump into the review of the game, Wisdom of Solomon. Hi, this is JT, and welcome to G Club. If you're new to the channel and you want to see more board game related content, such as interviews and epic board game trailers, then hit that subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified with any new content. In our reviews, we start off by getting into the best moment of the game, tell you if I like it, get into the pros and cons, and even do some comparisons and conclusions. So with that said, let's get into the best moment of Wisdom of Solomon. When you take advantage of the vast network of customs houses that you built in the land of Israel to grab a ton of resources, that's got to be the best moment of the game. In Wisdom of Solomon, you play governors attempting to gain the king's favor through building structures throughout Israel and helping to build the temple in Jerusalem. The game is played over years and the players have a lot of options. They can either see the merchant to buy and sell resources with favor as their currency, or go to the trader to swap one resource for any two resources. While meeting up with the merchant or trader, the fortune cards that the players have collected may be used. Players can also bring resources to the Levites to build a section of the temple to get victory points and pick up some fortune cards. They can also visit one of the holy places and get a bonus, or even attack other players that are hoarding by making their opponents give up half their resources to them. They can also utilize the services of the foreman to build custom houses that only that player benefits from. And by placing them there, they can block other players from resources in the land of Israel. In the land of Israel, the players can also send their workers out to other areas to gather resources and take advantage of the network of customs houses they built throughout the game. If the temple is completed or a player has no more customs houses left to build, the game will conclude at the end of that year. So when you place that worker on your customs house and gather a lot of resources from your network to only have Nick use the menorah to take half your goods, well, that's gotta be the best moment of the game. So that was the best moment of the game, but did I like it? Yes, I love this game. I love the simplicity of it. I love the fact that you have multiple paths to victory. Uh, there's different ways in which you can get resources and it's just simply a lot of fun. Uh, this is one of those worker placement games that have so many different options um, and have a lot of things that kind of build an engine for you that the players I've played with have been talking about the game days later and how much they've enjoyed it. But it's not without its flaws, so let's get in the details of that in The Balancing Act. Now, the favor of the king is both used as victory points and for your currency which makes for a really interesting economy within the market and makes for some really interesting plays with those fortune cards that you pick up in the game. Now I do wish that the art and the graphic design of the board match the fantastic art and the graphic design of the building cards and the great gameplay. I mean, the refiner in the gold mine, he definitely reminds me of someone. Now the networking of the customs houses makes for an interesting engine that can both be blocked and expanded. At the same time, the concept of the network of customs houses really is probably the most difficult concept to pick up in the game and can be confusing. However, besides that, it is really easy to pick up this game. However, some first time players might struggle with the amount of options that they have right at the beginning of the game. Now that bonus section that you can jump into makes for some really interesting decisions to help kind of salvage around when you feel like you can't really do much of anything else or if you simply just want to mess with your opponents. That's right, Nick. Now I do think this game could use a quick reference card, but make sure that they put that art with Nick Offerman on it. 
As I mentioned before, when it comes to the graphic design, I think there's some things they could tweak with it. So like on the board, you have these custom houses slots that are running north to south. I think if they went from east to west or west to east and you put the numbers in there, it would help create some more consistency in what exactly is going on in those slots, just like you have throughout the rest of the board. Speaking of graphic design, the iconography in this game is really good. Once you pick up the basics, it's really easy to pick up, as well as there's a really good reference sheet in the back that explains how the iconography works. One of my biggest disappointments within the hobby is trying to find a good biblically themed game. And while I've seen some of that trend kind of go in a little bit different direction with a few of the recent games, Wisdom of Solomon is definitely on the upward trend of these games that are actually good and biblically themed. Now, before you shut this thing down because maybe the biblical theme kind of turns you off, um, consider this, is that the Wisdom of Solomon game is actually just a really good worker placement game. It has some really good mechanisms within it, and it doesn't really feel like it's a Sunday school lesson that's really trying to preach at you. It just does a really good job at trying to build in the theme of the historical aspect of what was going on at the time of King Solomon. So, I really like what Fun Hill is doing. Back in 2013, I backed a game called The Kings of Israel, which I believe is also... Uh, sold alongside Wisdom of Solomon in this campaign. And so in my book, they're two for two when it comes to these games, and I'm looking forward to see what they do in the future. So if you're looking for a biblically themed worker placement game that gives you a lot of fun options, as well as an interesting networking resource management type uh, engine building kind of thing, uh, then I would definitely go take a look at Wisdom of Solomon and um, consider backing it. So if you like this video, you can check out one of these other videos that our G Club Lab Techs specifically picked out for you. I'm sure that you will fall in love with these videos, as one of them will have the eyes like fish pools in Heshbon, while the other has temples like a piece of pomegranate within their locks. Smoldering.